inconsistent order of columns from multiple Excel files in a folder is undoubtedly a challenge that needs to be fixed before appending Excel files to perform further analysis. This is a common challenge I've seen professionals and organizations battle with, and I've helped many professionals and organizations to fix the problem for efficient analysis. So, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the Power Query custom function to automate the correction of the inconsistent order of columns in a folder that contains Excel files. Let's get started. Based on what we have on the screen, I've got three Excel workbooks open. I've got the Transaction 2010, 2009, and 2008. Now, you can see, for instance, that in this first Excel file, the quantity column is in the column B, and then the quantity column is in column S. And then in this Excel file, the quantity is in column C. This is an example of inconsistent order of columns. And of course, if we perform append in the power query we can't of course append this kind of data set because of the different order of columns so we want to see how we can automate the cleaning of this or the reordering of these columns in the power query using the custom function let's get started i'm going to come to the folder at the bottom here now in the folder i've got the same transaction 2008 2009 and 2010 and i'm going to step out by pressing the back button now we have the copy of the transaction 2008 excel workbook we're going to use this as the base file to automate the cleaning of these files in the folder and then we're going to later on create our analysis and then we're going to drop this transaction 11 and 22 into the folder and that's going to automatically clean the data set so i'm going to open a brand new excel workbook so i'm going to press ctrl n and that's going to open an excel file i want to come to the data tab and then click on get and transform data from file and then from excel workbook i'm going to browse to the location of the excel transaction 2008 so which is this i'm going to double click this is going to open the navigator dialog box now in the navigator dialog box i'm going to see because this is dot excel s i'm going to say the 2008 and then this filter database 2008 so i want to see the first one at the top and then click on transform data the data is open in the power query editor Let's rename this. Let's call it base file. It can give any name. I just call it based file. Now I can see the quantity column. So I'm going to right click on the quantity column. I want to move all the numerical columns to the end, the right side of the data set. So I'm going to click on move to end. So this is going to be moved to the end. I'm going to search for another column called the profits. So I can see the profits. I can right click on the column, move to the end. Brilliant. So we have the four numerical columns to the end of our data set, the sales, discount, quantity, and profit. This is going to be the order of all the Excel files that we're going to automate by creating a custom function that we can invoke the function on top. So I'm going to right click on this based file and then create a duplicate. And then for the duplicate, I'm going to right click and rename. Let's just call this UDF function. You can give any name actually press enter and then we want to access the code in the advanced editor so i can come to the view tab and then i can click on the advanced editor alternatively i can right click and choose advanced editor so i'm going to land on the same page brilliant so we have the light and the in and of course we have each of the steps apply step now this is going to be the source and then we have the source that is containing the data so i'm going to select this part of the code and then press delete and then we want to create a custom function so place your cursor before the let press enter and then to create a function just open and close bracket and then we can give this a name let's just call this one my special function you can use any name you like and then we're going to pass in this my special function into the table arguments of the next step so to pass in we're going to use what's called the go to operator so the equals and the greater than symbol this is called the go to operator and then we can say the next step is the promoted headers which is the table dot promote headers function now the table dot promote headers function requires the table that one promote which is the intermediate step we deleted so i'm going to come here and carefully delete this part and then i'm going to call the my special function so just keep on typing my special function and you're going to see this little icon this is telling this is a special function we created and then press the tab key and then that's going to solve the problem for now we have no errors detected. Click done. 
Beautiful. This can automatically switch to FX, and this is called a function in Power Query. Now, we want to go ahead and import the folder. So I'm going to come to the new source, and I want to go to the file, and I want to go to the folder. And then this is the folder, transaction 2008 to 10. Double click, and then click open. This is going to show the next thing. So we want to click on transform data and then in the transform data we have the content in form of binary and then we have the name the extension date access and so on now we don't need all these attributes columns so i'm going to come to the content right click and then remove all the columns and then we can check this out now don't click on this binary just click on this white space the open space and then we can see we have the 2010 2009 and then 2008 you can even move this up a little bit now we want to access the name and the data in the binary file. So I'm going to come to the add column tab and then in the add column tab under the general, we want to create a custom column. Now in the custom column dialog box, we can give this a new name, but this is not required. We want to come to the custom column formula. Now I'm going to use the Excel workbook function to access the binary file in the content column. So press the tab key. Make sure the E is capital letter E and the W is capital letter W because this is case seven. I'm going to open the brackets and then now the Excel dot workbook requires workbook as a binary, and then I can double click on the contents and that's going to be it. I can put in a comma and then I can use the first row as the headers, but that's not required for now. I'm just going to go ahead and close the bracket for now, and then we have the no syntax error have been detected. Click OK. And then we have the table. Now we have the table dot add column. And then we can see in the table dot add column we have uh, two columns, name and then the data. Now we can click on this expandable add column, and then we want to uncheck use original column name as prefix. And then we can even see the name and then the data. So click OK. So we have the table dot expand table column, and then we can see each of the Excel files. So this is basically for the 2008. So we can see we have the um, quantity column in column three. I can come to the 2009 and then I can go to the right side. The quantity column is in column 19. And then the 2010, I can check it out. The column, the quantity is in the column two. So of course this is still inconsistent. Now I'm gonna come here, right click or click on the content and then hold down the shift key and then click on the name. So when we right click and remove the two columns, they are not needed again. Now we can go on and invoke the custom function we created. So in the add column tab, click on the invoke custom function. And then we can give this a name. Let's just call this reorder columns, reordered columns. And then for the function query, we want to click on that and then we're going to access the UDA function we created. So click on that. And then for the next operation, of course, we have to select the column. So we have the data column. So click on that. And then we can click on OK. And this is the moment of truth. Click OK. When I click OK, we have the table.add column. And I can check it out. So when I click on this, I can scroll to the right side. So you can see I've got the four numerical columns to the right side, exactly what we have here in the based file. So case we have the numerical columns, we have the sales, discount, quantity, and the profits. The same thing when I come here, I can see we have all the numerical columns to the right for the 2018. I can come to the 2019, I can scroll to the right, we have the numerical columns, and the, sorry, 2008, 2009, and 2010. I can scroll to the right, and then we have the columns to the right, which is amazing. Now, I can right click on this data and then remove, not needed again. And then we can go on and append. So I can click on this expanded icon to combine. So when I click on that, I'm going to say all the columns and click OK. So it's going to automatically append the data set, which is so brilliant. And then we want to use the auto data type detect. So I'm going to come to the transform tab. I can click on detect data type, click on that. So we're going to have uh, one, two, three, A, B, C, and so on, which is brilliant. I can scroll to the right and I can see the sales, discount, quantity, profit, which is absolutely amazing. So we've corrected the inconsistent columns 
which is amazing. Now, we can go on and perform our analysis on top of these data sets. Okay, let's see. We want to see the total profit by region. So, I can select the region column first, and then I can click in the transform data, click on the group bar. So, we're going to see the group by specified column to group by and the desired output. So, it's going to be basic, and this is going to be our categorical column, the region. And let's just call it total profits. I'm going to come to the operation. We want to use the sum and then for the numerical column, the column, I'm going to choose the profit and then click OK. So we have the total profit by the region, which is super amazing. Now we can go on and rename this. Let's give this a beautiful name. Let's call it our total profit by region and then press enter to commit. Now, we want to go ahead and load this result to an Excel worksheet. So, I'm going to come to the Home tab and then click on Close and Load Tool. Now, when I click on that, we're going to see the Import Data Wizard. Of course, we don't want to lose the based file. So, I'm going to choose Only Create Connection and then click OK. And I'm going to see the Queries and Connections tax pane to the right hand side. So, we've loaded as connection and then we can come to the total profit by region right click and then we want to load to a table in the existing worksheet so click ok beautiful and then we can apply the currency formatting control shift 4 okay which is super amazing now we can go on to the folder and grab the 20 2011 to 2012 so i'm going to select both of them Control C or Control X. I'm going to come to this original file, Control V to paste. And then I can close or minimize this for now. Now, let's see what's going to happen. We can go on and refresh the results. Now we can see the south total profit is 55,602. So I can right click and then refresh. When I refresh, see what happened to these numbers. Amazing. So the number has increased to 138,932. Brilliant. Next, let's say we have the data for the 2013, 2014, and so on. All we need to do is just copy them and then paste them in this folder and then refresh our report. And that's going to give us the updated total profit by region. So, in this video, we've seen how we can use the Power Query custom function to correct inconsistent order of columns. And I hope you find this useful. If you enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up, share with your friends, comment, and follow me for more videos. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.